Good afternoon, saints, or good evening, rather. This is Wilbur Robinson, pastor of the Grace Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith, and we are located at 1 Coleman Avenue in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. Tonight, I just want to drop by and give you another little nugget of truth. Um, I want you to consider your place in the Lord uh, as far as how are we, and I see you were, we, how are we living in accordance with God's requirements? Um, we're told to come out of the world and be separate. We have to examine ourselves. How much of the world do we still have attached to us? Uh, we are told to be not conformed to this world and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How much of that has taken place? Um, I'm just concerned because it just feels like the way things are going in the world today, um, we are just so close to the Lord's return. And it just doesn't seem like the church community is really trying to live a godly life. And I know that the enemy says that, but not so much the enemy, but the scripture tells us, you know, it tells us that broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in there. At. And we have to understand that Satan is very subtle, very, very subtle. Uh, he has not lost any of his power. Uh, fortunately, those of us who are born again have been given power over all the power of the enemy. But do we use it? Do we exercise our faith and do we trust God? Because God is the one who is the power within us to give us that power over Satan. So I'm just curious as to where we are. Hopefully we're doing what we're supposed to be the way we're supposed to be. But I want to read some scriptures tonight just so that you can see what the Bible says and how serious it is and just make sure, and well, look, what we want to do is examine ourselves to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Because trust me, saints, if we miss this, if we miss this, there's going to be a time going on in the world that nobody's going to want to be in, in, included in. And especially since the Lord has made a way for us to escape this. I mean, there is a way. There's a way. It's a way of holiness. And holiness is something that, that you need God to take you through. God is the only one who is holy, the only one who can live holy. And he has put that Holy Spirit in us so that he can live holy in us through our obedience to his instruction. And if we're not following him word for word, letter for letter, step by step, we're not going to make this thing, saints of God. And we need to let go of the world and everything about the world and focus on God. And I mean, seriously, focus on God. Okay, that's my little interlude, <laughs> a little dialogue coming at you. But I want you to just pay attention. I'm going into scripture. I'm going to read tonight in Matthew, uh, not Matthew, Romans. We're going to do some Romans and we're going to do some little Ephesians. And I just want you to hear what the scripture says and take heed to it. Huh? Take heed to the scripture. Okay, I think I want to start in Romans, the sixth chapter. Now, listen, I know you guys get tired of me because I don't seem to change this, the subject. But when the Lord sees that there is a change at the rate that he wants it, you know, it's got to be line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here, a little there. But we have to do that little bit that we've that we're being introduced to us. So as we hear that little bit, we need to do that little bit, apply that little bit. And that's what makes this thing so unusual is that God knows that we have to do what he wants us to do, but he also knows that we can't do it all at once. You understand what I'm saying? It's, you're, not, you're not going to live this thing overnight. You're going to be working out your salvation when Jesus comes. But if we don't do the little things as they come to us, then they're going to be, then we're going to have a backlog, and we're going to be like a, be like a, a Belshazzar, I believe it was. I'm not sure who it was. Anyway, when when the prophet told him, you know, he was a mini mini tikel ufarsen. Huh? He told him, he said, look, you've been found in the balance, and you want it. We don't want to be found in the balance of money, okay? So let's go. Let's let's get this thing right. Get serious. Forget about the people around you and focus on Jesus Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because Jesus can keep you from doing wrong to somebody else. Jesus can keep you from getting upset over the things that are coming against you. Jesus can do that. 
because he's done it. He's got the victory over sin and Satan. Okay, here we go. I just want to read something in Romans 6 chapter, and I want you to listen to it. And uh, it, it just says here, Romans 6 and 1. It says here, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now listen, this is what he's saying here. In the fifth, look, in the fifth chapter, the 21st verse of the fifth chapter, it says here that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might uh, grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. So listen, uh, the 20, I'm sorry, the 20th verse, I want to read that to you because it makes sense. He says, moreover, the law entered in that of, uh, of the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Listen, he's saying, look, you know, sin is increasing, but where sin increased, grace increased. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God has given us grace to cover us as we go through, but we have to be on this way of holiness. So mm -hmm. God, this sin is on increase, but the, God's grace is going to increase. And that's why Paul says here in the first verse of the sixth chapter, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Huh? He said, look. So we just keep sinning because grace is going uh, is going to increase to cover us, huh? should we? And then he goes on to say, God forbid. Huh? And then the question is, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than that? This is what I'm talking about, saints of God. How in the world do we continue to do the things that we ask God to bring us out of? Huh? This is what I'm talking about. And this is what the Lord said. Let's go over here. I uh, just want to read this to you. In, in chapter 12, because this is this is what I'm talking about. And this is what the Lord is saying here. And, and Paul is saying here, look, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 12 and 1, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now listen to this next verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And this just goes together with what Paul is saying over here. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And that's why we have to, we have to listen. We have to have a completely changed mind. We are no longer to conform to the world. Listen. That's why Timothy and, and Peter, that's why Isaiah, that's why Jeremiah, they all spoke about our outward adorning. And I am not just talking about you women. I'm talking about men and women. Uh, we are not to, uh, where do those fashions come from? That's my question. They are coming from the world. They are coming from society. Who rules the world? Huh? Satan rules the world. Satan introduces all of these things, and then we pick them up, and then we bring them into the church. Then we start confusing people who are trying to live holy because we're still living like the world. Well, listen, saints of God, understand something. We have to turn everything loose that we did in the world. You got to do it. You have to do it. Because you can't fully serve God and you can't fully serve, well, you can't, if you, if you look, if you do any of what the world is calling for, then you're not in Christ. Huh? Because there's no sin. He can't, he, it can't dwell, that sin can't dwell where Christ is. If we have been born again, let me say something to you. You know, when Jesus took the boys up on, on the mountain, and he and, and he transfigured it, it, Peter, John, and, and James, I think it was. And he took them up in the mountain, and they were, and, and he transfigured before them. They witnessed Jesus, the power and the glory of God. They witnessed this man. He was a human, but he transformed himself into a spirit. Huh? 
his whole countenance changed. He changed from a natural to a spirit. And not only that, he had two dead people come. Who, and they were in. They were actually in the forms that, of men, but they were spirits. Huh? But but he. This is a demonstrating the power of God. Uh, that is able to make that transformation. Now, listen to what I'm going to say to you. Once you get born again, this is the very same spirit, the very same power that transformed Jesus Christ into an angel, a vision of bright light. Uh, he turned into a bright light, brighter than the sun. And there were witnesses there that saw this thing. They made this account. They saw it was true. And let me tell you something, says God. It is the exact same spirit that raised up the dead Christ from the grave and brought him back to life. It is the same Christ spirit that, 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 that spoke everything into existence. This same spirit is in every born-again believer. Why in the world can't we allow that same spirit, that power that has the power over all the power of the devil, how in the world can we continue to live for the devil when we have the power of God on the inside? And I'm telling you, you can give up everything that you did in the world. You can resist every temptation that Satan comes to bring before you. Why, preacher? Because Jesus is in you trying to live a godly life in you. And while you're struggling with your flesh, God's grace is covering you as long as you stay in the struggle. Somebody said, fight the good fight of faith. You must exercise the faith that you have in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You look the same, huh? You have struggles in the flesh. Listen, these same temptations that were bugging you in the world that you yielded to, now you don't have to because you can give them to Jesus. Now let me tell you something else. You have to have faith to believe that Jesus is, is able and that he is doing the things that you want him to do, maybe not at your pace, but at his pace. And as long as you know that he's in charge, then you give it to him. And the saints of God, if we just learn to let Jesus have his way in our lives, your life would be so much sweeter, huh? Somewhere in the scripture, he told them boys, he said, take my, uh, uh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's what we need to do. Learn who Jesus is. That's what these uh, disciples and the apostles that were doing, they were following Jesus. They were learning who Jesus was. And every time the Lord would perform a miracle, they were amazed at the miracle at that time. But when he went to do something else, they were amazed again because they were thinking this, well, you know, he did this once, but maybe he won't do it again, huh? Just like the 5,000 and the 4,000. What happened? He fed 5,000, huh? 5,000 men with two little fish and five loaves of bread. He fed 5,000 besides the men, the, the women and children, okay? Now, this whole thing came up again. They asked the very same question. How can we feed so many people? And the Lord had to remind them, look, the, 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 look, we just fed, what did we just do? Huh? And how many baskets did you take up? Well, we took up 12. Well, then I'm the same Jesus. Look, he walked on the water, huh? He walked on the water. He healed everybody. Now listen to what I'm saying to you. Everybody that they brought to him when he went into these towns and these different villages and cities and they brought the sick and he healed them all. That's why Mark said somewhere in the scripture, he said, look, he said, if everything that God, that Christ did was written in a book, even the world itself couldn't contain the books that could be written about what he did. It, 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 he's real, children. He's real, and he wants to do for you what you want him to do, but the devil tells us that he ain't going to do it for you because you're not worthy. Well, he died for you before you even knew who he was. You understand what I'm saying? I hope so. Because, saints of God, I just don't believe the body of Christ is, 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 is well, no, let me change that. The body, the sincere body of Christ is holding fast. I'm talking about the church community. I'm talking about all the, listen, huh? if everybody was on the right page in Christ Jesus, there wouldn't be all these different forms of religion out here. But I'm talking about those of us who are born again, baptized, water baptized believers. 
with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave others. That is the only one and one and only way to get into the kingdom of God and into the body of Christ. And if you are in there, there is no reason, no reason, no excuse whatsoever that we should be living beneath our privileges. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have struggles. There's going to be trials and tribulations because they go with living in this world. But like, but like the word says that we're in it, but not of it. Huh? And the Lord said, "Look, let us not be attached. Don't, don't, don't break. Don't, don't get too attached to this world, huh? Because you got to be able to get up out of here." So I'm just saying to you, saints of God, if we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, we have to have a new way of thinking. Huh? We have to have a brand new way of thinking. We have to, I, that we, there has to be a transformation. And what I was talking, what I was getting at when, with the, when I was telling you about the trans, uh, transfiguration on the mountain, this same power has transformed, uh, transformed us from natural beings to spiritual beings. All right, you look the same, but you are a spiritual being now since you have been water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Spirit of God and living for God, you are a spiritual being because that transformation, listen, you didn't turn into a bright light, but he took that old, ragged, wretched nature out of you and put in a clean, pure, righteous nature. And that's who's in you now. And that is who wants to live for you if you just let it. Hmm? How do I do that, preacher? Stop looking in the world. Huh? Stop looking into the world. Don't worry about what the world is doing. Don't worry about what Trump's doing. Don't worry about what anybody's doing around you. Don't worry about all the evil that's going on around you. Don't worry about the, this, this corona that's going on around you. This is evil times. huh? Uh, look, uh, this, this, whether it's corona or whether it's corona plus something else and they're, giving, they're blaming it on corona, 200,000 people have died huh? since this thing kicked off. Uh, and they say by April it's going to be probably up to 500,000 people. But you're still here. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you hold on to the word of God and start living for him with your whole heart, you're going to make it through this thing. And if you don't make it through it, you're going to make it in with to be with him. So it ain't nothing to be fearful of. So listen to the Bible now. Listen to the Bible. Let's do it again. 12 and 1. I beseech you. This is Paul talking. Brethren, by the mercies of God, and it is nothing but mercy, huh? That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. And the only way you can present your body holy is that you have to have the Holy Spirit in you, huh? That's the only way. And you're going to present the, listen, the, listen, our presenting it to God huh, is that we're yielding ourselves to him, okay? But he's going to present us before his father. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're trying to do. We give him our lives, and then he's going to take us and give us to his father. He's going to present us to his father, huh? Holy, huh? When he's going to be, why? Because we will have obeyed and followed him, huh? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Here it is. And be not conformed to this world. Give the world back all the stuff that is trying to sell you on TV, on your YouTubes, on your cell phones, on your watch phones, all these ads that are out here telling you what you should be doing to do this and do that. Huh? You better get away from it. Stay out of the casinos. Stay away from the lottery lines. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop cussing. Stop, stop fornicating. Stop committing homosexuality. Stop all that stuff. This is the world, and the world is trying to give it to you, and you kind of take it because you're too weak to let the devil, you're too weak to resist the devil and let God have his way. When you come into this way of holding the saints of God, you are coming out of that mess. Huh? Christ died for you so that you would be freed from that mess. At one time, you were, you could not do any more but sin. And when you were, before you got saved, huh, you were, you, you couldn't do righteously because you were a servant of Satan. And the Bible tells us here, let me, I'm going to find it for you, because I'm going to tell you what it says here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, let me go, look, 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 uh, uh, six. Let me just, let me do six again. Let me start up here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin the grace may abound? God forbid. Listen, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many, as so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? 
Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his uh, be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, here it is, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. You don't have to. And if you're so contrary and hard-hearted and stiff-necked that you want to go back and, and, and defend yourself, you want to tell somebody off, you want to cuss somebody out, you want to uh, hold unforgiveness, you want to uh, resist the, the, the temptation to yield uh, and, 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 and resist the temptation to treat, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Huh? Look, 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 the Word of God will do it for you. But you just got to yield to it. Listen to this, what it says up here. Oh, boy, I'm just getting upset with this thing. He says, look, 11th verse. Likewise, reckon ye, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it to the lust thereof. Do you hear what I'm saying? Everything, everything that comes out of the world into your mind is catered to fulfill a lustful desire in your flesh. Uh, everything. Uh, so those are the things you have to resist. Uh, those are the things you have to resist. Uh, look, you, you daughters, uh, don't be getting all caught up with boyfriends. Uh, the next thing you know, you're going to be pregnant and he, they're going to be gone and making somebody else pregnant. Then you're going to be left alone and raised in kids by yourself. Then you're going to blame God for why did this happen to me? And all you had to do was stay with the Lord. Huh? <laughs> That's all. That's all I'm saying. Huh? And look, you young fellas think you got to get high to have fun. No, it's, that's a, it's a lie. Huh? That's a lie. What, everything that's out there that the devil is telling you you need for you to be happy and to be satisfied and to be and to have fun, huh? it's going to kill you. It's going to be your death. And not only the death in the physical, it's going to be the death in the spiritual. Because if you die with the crack pop in your mouth and the marijuana cigarettes in your, and, your, and your beer and your liquor and your wine and your fornicating and your adultery and your homosexuality, huh? if you die like that, when, you, uh, when your eyes come open, brother, you're going to, be, you're going to know something. Huh? You're going to know that this Jesus was in fact real, but I cannot get back. I won't be able to repent from this place because I'm going to be in hell waiting to be cast into the lake of fire and there's nothing but torment, huh? And whatever you have given up your life for, it's going to torment you for an eternity. Okay, <laughs> I just whipped you with that, but I'm telling you, saints of God and people, if you hear this, then you need to hear it. You need to get right with God and do it now because this this whole life that you're living is coming to an end one day and we're going to have to stand before a holy God and give an account for every deed done in this body. Not just every deed, but every word that was spoken, every thought and the intent of our heart. Everything is going to be judged for what sort it was when we lived on earth. Listen to what the Bible says. Let me go back here to chapter 6 here. Uh, listen to this. In the 12th verse again, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Listen to this. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness, huh? but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Listen to this. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin that we, because we are not under the law and under grace? Again, God forbid. Know ye not, listen, I want you to hear this. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Hey, listen, that's plain and simple, children. If you do something wrong, if you decide that I'm going to do something wrong, I know it's wrong, and I'm going to do it anyway, I am now serving Satan and not God. 
And if I get caught serving Satan and God, it, because listen, the issues of life and death are in the hands of the Lord, not Satan, okay? Satan can't move on you until God says so. So if I, if Satan is, if he can trick me into doing something contrary to God's word, I don't care if you've ever spoken in tongues. Huh? I don't care if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're not obeying the Holy Ghost, you're going to be lost because no sin is going in. So if I'm caught just doing one thing outside of God's word after having been born again, I am going to be lost. Okay. Okay. Well, where does grace come in? Grace comes in when I repent for doing wrong. Huh? So what I got to do is when I find myself even thinking about doing wrong, I got to repent of that thing right now. Don't let that thing get in my member. Huh? Don't let me steal something just because I can. Don't let me say something just because I can that is contrary to God's word. That's what I'm talking about. You got to be focused that you, your very life depends on how you live it down here. If you live it for Jesus Christ, you got a reward waiting on you, brother, that the Bible tells me, I have not seen and ear have not heard the things that the Lord has prepared for them that love his appearance. Huh? <laughs> but it also says, if you live contrary to his word, then you're going to be lost. You're going to be cast away and you're going to be lost in your eternal life. Now, let me tell you this to you so you understand what I'm saying. Death hmm, is not death and over. No. Your death is a total separation from God. That's that second death. That's the death that's going to take place after everybody is resurrected. Everybody that's ever died is going to be resurrected and stand before God and give an account for everything done in their bodies. And once they have found, uh, once they have found uh, sinners uh, uh, filled with iniquity, unrighteous, unsaved, huh? They're going to be cast into a lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. And in that lake, you're going to be having, you'll have a body, but it will not be consumed by fire. It's just going to burn. Huh? It's going to burn from now or from the time they're cast in for eternity. You don't believe it? Well, live like you want to, huh? but you'll find out. Hmm? You'll find out. You, you, you don't want to hear it because you know this is why the word is so difficult the word is difficult because we don't want to change from what we know huh? we know how we knew how to do what we did we knew how to take care of ourselves huh? before we found out that Jesus wanted to take care of us huh? but the way Jesus wants us to live is contrary to what I'm used to huh? Huh? he wants to take all the fun out of life you know because sin is fun yeah the devil's got to make it fun Make it seem like you have, you know, that you're missing out when you come to the Lord. Huh? You just start living when you come to the Lord. All right, I'm going to give you something else. I didn't mean to get off on these things, but I'm trying to get you to see something. You, you, born again. I'm talking to you now. Born again people. Born again people do not have to sin. They have to yield themselves to the Lord. Huh? Submit yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. What's that mean? He's going to lift you up. He's going to raise you up. He's going to bring you higher and higher. He's going to teach you more and more about him. Huh? And the more you learn of him, the easier it is to live for him. Huh? So listen, I got another verse that I want to read to you. Almost done. I, I meant to read more instead of fussing at you. But again, I just want you to hear these things. Okay, there's got to be a change. Listen, let's go over here to Ephesians, Ephesians 4. And I want to read, uh, you know what, we're almost done. But I'm going to start reading. Now listen, the reason I want to read Ephesians 4, uh, you know, Romans said it too. And, and, and you know, this basically, we're, it's talking about having to change mind, change mind, change heart. And we're to look to God to keep us. We can't do it by ourselves. Nobody can live holy without Jesus Christ. If, if that were the case, he would not have had to come and die. So we could have put it together for ourselves, but we couldn't. And even our righteousness, the good that we did before Jesus Christ, is as filthy rags in the sight of God. So I want to read to you, and I'm going to read a little bit. You bear with me. I'm going to read a little bit. This is Ephesians 4, 
And what I want you to focus in on is that uh, we're going to pick it up in verse 17. But there's some important things I want you to hear because this is how, this is what, what we're talking about. This is a renewed person. This is a person who has a renewed, been born again, been changed. And this is how we're supposed to live our lives. This is what the Lord is looking for. Now listen, I therefore, Paul's talking, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. This, now this is what we're supposed to be doing now. Listen, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Huh? Now look at what he said here. Huh? With long suffering, forbearing one another in love, agape love, not lust. This is agape love. We have, we, we are to esteem others better than ourselves. We are to give ourselves to helping our brothers and sisters make this journey. You help me and I'm helping you. And, and look at what the next the first three says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We look, I want to encourage you in the spirit and I want you to encourage me, but I can't do it fighting you. huh? There's got to be peace. I got to I got to make peace with you. Listen to this. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Listen, one Lord, and it's Jesus, one faith that's in Jesus, and one baptism, and that's in the name of Jesus. Okay. It says, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through you all, and in you all. Now listen to what he's saying here. The same God, not the same God. Listen, one God and Father of all. Now listen, who is above all? So he's above everything. He, he look, every he, look, the, look. As big as the world and the universe is, it, 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 it still can't match God. God is over everything. Now I want you to pay attention to this next part of this verse. He who is above all and through you all and in you, through all and in you all. You have him in you. And just leave him alone and let him lead you and guide you. Huh? Let him take away those little temper tantrums that you have. Huh? Let him take away that unforgiveness that you used to have. Let him take away that bitterness that, that, that you used to have. Huh? Let him take away the hatred that you used to have. Huh? He'll take it because none of that's in him. And if he's in you, then it shouldn't be in you. And that he's not going to keep you from doing those things, but he's able to keep you from doing them if you allow him to. So you resist wrong and he will pick you up. Good God, I know this is right. Say to God, this is right. You got to give this thing over a we, we. I say you, yeah, we, or we won't make it. Look up, listen, seven verse. But unto every one of us is given the grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What were these gifts? Now that he is, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Huh? So listen, we know he came down. He came down, he died, he went into the earth, and he preached to the so saints in the earth, and then he ascended up back up into heaven. Huh? That's right. So that he could fill all things. And you just heard it up here in the sixth verse. He's not only has he filled all things, he's all he's in us. Huh? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. And in you all. Huh? And if you're saved, if you're born again, you are among the you all. Okay. And then he goes on to say, and he gave some apostles, some and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And why did he give it to them? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why preachers, teachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, these are gifts given to mankind for the church. Huh? And that's why people are working in the church, doing God's will. There are false teachers out here, but God's got his teachers. And when you hear somebody tell you something that's contrary to what's written, you know he's under the other category of false prophet. So you don't have to listen to him. Huh? And you don't have to listen to him. Now, I want to say this to you. Don't get so attached to the organization or the group huh? or the congregation. 
Huh? If the word is not being taught, you need to get up out of there. Huh? Don't get so attached to anything or anybody that is contrary to this word of God. Because it says over here in the third verse, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in a bond of peace. Huh? You can't keep the spirit if, there's, if, you, if, the, if, the, if the teaching is wrong according to the word, then you cannot unite in the spirit. Huh? So you have to be careful of that. And don't be too afraid to get out from under things that are going to keep you from growing in Christ. Huh? Find, look, the Lord will send you somewhere. He will. All right, I won't hold you up. I just want you to hear these things. 12th verse again, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God in unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We are being built up into little Jesuses. <laughs> That's what's happening to us. Uh, we're becoming more like Christ as we grow in him. Line upon line, precept upon precept. But saints of God, we have to stick with the line and stick with the precept. As we learn it, as we see it, then we walk in it. Okay? That's light. As you see the light, walk therein. Huh? As you hear God's voice, and harden not your heart. Respond to it. You see what I'm saying? That's what he's talking about. Until we grow. That's why we got the preachers. That's why the Lord said, you know, listen, what Scripture said, now how can they hear in whom they have not believed? Uh, how can they believe in whom they've not heard? And how can they hear uh, without a preacher? And how can they preach except to be sent? That's why God sent the, 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 all, all these, these gifts for the church. Huh? So you're hearing it. Huh? Now you have to receive it. And you have to examine it, by, you examine it by the Spirit that's in you. And God will reveal his truth to you. Then you can continue to live for it. Let me read a little bit more. We're almost done. 14th verse says, That ye henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. This is the false teacher huh, that is lying in wait to deceive. He is the one, uh, uh, it's a, being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Listen, listen, uh, listen. God did not send people to tell you that you're going to be rich and that you're going to prosper. Huh? That, I mean, that for that reason, uh, the, the word didn't come. The word came to keep you from dying and going to hell. So that's what you want to do is you want to live for God so that you don't go to hell. Huh? And the preachers are going to, should be teaching you that. They should be teaching you this word. And very basically, is, this comes in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, at every one of you, and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. That is the beginning of salvation. Once you reach that point in life, you are now prepared to live a holy life. Huh? But people coming to you telling you that you, you should be rich and you got to give this much money in order to get a blessing from God, please, you don't need that. This same God came and died for you before before you even knew who he was. He didn't require anything to do that. Huh? You don't need to pay for, for a blessing. All you got to do is obey God's word. Okay. Let me stop fussing and go on. Here we go. It says, our uh, 15th verse, or speaking, in the, or speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So this is where we're being built up into the body of Christ. From whom, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? Now, listen to this, and we're going home. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who blinds them, preacher? Satan blinds them. Hmm? That's what I'm talking about. Satan blinds them. So if you hear this word and you don't want to receive it, it's because your, your father, the Satan, is influencing you. Huh? He's blinding you from the truth. So what you need to do is, the, one number one, make up in your mind that I want to do God's will. 
And if I want to do God's will, then I'm going to I'm going to absorb this scripture, this Bible, the words in this Bible. I'm going to enjoy, embrace them, and I'm going to stick with them, and I'm going to resist everything that speaks against what's written in this book. Okay, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, lustful desires. That's what lasciviousness is. Lustful desires. And 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 and, and what is lusting? Uh, the flesh uh, is lusting after the is lusting against the spirit. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So they're working against each other, and that flesh is trying to get you to go back to what you used to do. So let me say something to you: that devil is not going to introduce you to something that you're not familiar with. Okay, so you know when he's coming. You know what he's trying to do. So you have to fight the good fight of faith and resist that devil. Let's go a little bit further. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to uh, lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Huh? Flesh is never good enough. Never good enough. It's always going to want what it wants, and it's going to want more than what it needs. That's the flesh. Huh? But the scripture tells us that whatever state we're in, they're with to be content. <laughs> Goodness, why? Because Jesus is taking care of us. Huh? And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's Bible. And that's why we want to stick with the Bible because you don't need a whole lot. All you need is enough for the day. Okay. 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, listen, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Put off that old lifestyle, the former lifestyle, huh? that old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Huh? You did deceitful lusts. Huh? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is the Bible talking to us. Huh? Romans over there said it. And, and, and now it's being told being told to us again. And, 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 and this, is, this is the thing. The mind has to change. If the mind changes, then what comes into the mind, the righteousness that comes into the mind, gets into the heart, and then out of the heart is the abundance of life. Huh? And that's what we use to draw people. That's what makes God happy. That pleases him. Okay, go on a little further and let you, let you go. It says, 23 again, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put off the, on the, uh, that you put on, I'm sorry, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Do you see what this word said? Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You have been born again. You have been recreated in the image of the God that created the heavens and the earth. Huh? And that's why the scripture tells us, uh, uh, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Because the sons of God are the created beings. Huh? The sons of man are from earth, but the sons of God are created beings. Huh? So we are recreated. We are born over again. We were born into the world, the son of man, because we were born in the similitude of God. But after Adam's fall, we were born in, this, in, in, the, image, uh, in, the, in the image of man. Uh, but now we have been recreated through the new birth. Good God, we look, and only a God can do it. That's why, saints of God, I'm telling you, your life, according to the scripture, is hidden in Christ Jesus, where? In heavenly places. Huh? You, are, you look the same, but your life is moved from earth to heaven. God said it, and I believe it. 24, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, listen, put it away. Every man, let's say, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Okay, anger is allowed, but don't sin as a result of it. Neither give place to the devil, so don't give him no space. Don't give him any space, huh? Because all he wants is space, and he wants to just get in, just get in, 
and he'll he'll look. He's patient. He's, as long as you let let me in, then I'm gonna wait for a right. I'm gonna wait for an opportunity. Huh? Just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Hmm? Look, I'm telling you, I don't believe that that was the first time Eve went to look at that tree, and I don't believe that's the first time Satan watched her do it. So I knew he waited for a moment when he's it was she was more vulnerable, and my man moved on her. Huh? That's what he, that's what the devil wants to do. Just just entertain one of those temptations that he brings before you, and he's got you. You have to resist him, and he'll flee from you. All right, let me finish up. I'm sorry. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Listen, corrupt communication is not necessarily using profanity. But it's gossip, it's talking about things that you don't know, it's lying, the, uh, anger, uh, 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 the Bible says a soft anger turns away wrath. So these are the things, saints of God, we have to be conscious of and let God deal with these things. And I say often, before you speak, listen to what you're going to say and process how it's going to be received. Huh? Think about it. Some things you have to say are going to hurt somebody, but it's not your intent to hurt them. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the godly spirit in it. That's the Lord that's in us, working in us. I'm going to finish up. I'm sorry again. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. This is what I'm talking about. You are sealed now. You are sealed. You are in the body of Christ and you are sealed. And the way you keep that station in Christ Jesus is to resist the temptation to do any of what the devil is saying to you and follow after God. If you slip and fall, ask God to forgive you and he will and just move forward. I'm not talking about for, ask forgiveness because you were caught. I'm talking about ask forgiveness and turn from it. Do you understand what I'm saying? <coughs> Excuse me. So, excuse me, again, I'm going to give you the rest of it. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand this, though. I mean, look, it does grieve the Spirit. God is God is, is, is grieved. It hurts him when we do wrong. It hurts him because we are a part of his body. So when we sin, then we hurt him. The scripture tells us somewhere that we should not be involved in prostitution or, or getting hooked up with, with in, in, in illicit sexual activity. Because when we join ourselves to somebody that's not legally ours, then we are joining ourselves and we're joining the body of Christ in that sin. You know, think about that thing. Because what you do to one, the least of the little ones, you're doing it unto me. So whatever we do in this body now that we're born again, we're doing it as unto the Lord. So think now. Think about it and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He says, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness. Now, listen, I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be tough because we got some hard-hearted, angry-spirited saints. <laughs> yeah, yes, I said saints. And you are saints. You're born again. But you're hard-headed and contrary when you're going to let that devil make you angry and get real angry and bitter at somebody who's trying to get to heaven like you. Huh? Instead of taking a little something, huh? Take something, say to God, take something, huh? Look, look, fight a good fight of faith, huh? That's what you got to do, huh? Arm yourselves like Jesus armed himself. He knew exactly what he's going into, and he went through it. Even though he was going, on, look, his last trip into Jerusalem, he knew he was going up there to be killed, and he he was heading. He look, there wasn't nobody turning him around. I'm going up there. He told them boys over there in Mark. He said, look, I'm going up to Jerusalem and they're going to spit on me. They're going to scourge me and I'll be turned over to, uh, to the authorities and they're going to mistreat me, spit on me, slap me around and then kill me. But I'm getting up on the third day. But he was headlong straight on into Jerusalem because he knew what he had to go and do. You have to endure your suffering too. So do it like the Lord did. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. It's not going to be easy. 
Listen, the Lord did not want to go and suffer that stuff in the flesh because Father, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So he did, the flesh did not want to die. The flesh did not want to suffer. But the flesh was obedient to the Father. And we are to be obedient to the Father through the Jesus Christ so that he can, we can endure the hardness that's coming against us so that at the end of this life, he will take us to be with him. And all those who were against us and brought trouble to us, he'll take care of them for you. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. That's a sense of God. Ain't nobody going to get to win over you. No, no weapon forms is going to prosper. Huh? Many of the afflictions are going to, of the righteous, but he's going to deliver us out of them all. What do you have to worry about? Really? Huh? God's got you. And you can't die until he gives permission. Hmm? All right, this. Finish up, Wilbur. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. There is no excuse. The God of creation gave his son to die so that we would not have to die. Now this is who you should serve and worship and praise the rest of the days of your life. Okay, so that's it for this week at the Forty Night. I thank you for putting up with me. I, I got a little off on some areas, but it just troubles me to see the body of Christ struggling with things that the enemy is offering. And there's so much, so many false things. And, you know, uh, it's just so many things going on that are just not like God in the church. And people don't seem to mind. They, you know, they just don't seem to mind. But you are responsible for your soul. And whatever somebody else does, huh, it should not affect you enough to make you change what you're doing for the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. You get with Christ and you stay with Christ and you take everything that the world brings against you and let Jesus take care of the world and he'll also take care of you. All right, that's it. I'm done. I thank God for you putting up with me and I hope you really examine yourself. Uh, get into the word, study it, make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and, and remember what the Lord said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Okay, God bless.